Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Hey number ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking and the debunking crusade continues. But today we have a little bit of a special episode because as you know, what I normally do on my debunking videos is that I find uh, or sometimes people find for me videos that are spreading misconception or teaching something completely wrong about the, the past, whether it be Roman, Japanese or the medieval period. And then I debunk it. And of course, I try to be civil as I do that. I never really directly attack the person who is making the content, but I do attack the argument. However, the watchful and observing eye of the Metatron is also looking at its own content. So today I'm going to debunk myself, but from the past. Exactly. We're going to go back to 2014. Let's do it. Okay, so we're going to look at a few videos today, but the first one I'd like to debunk is a video made on the 10th of May 2014. So this is a video from seven years ago, and um, it's a video about the Great Helm, because at the time I made a whole series, which was really what gave a, a starting kick to my channel and started to uh, allow me to get views. I mean, this video got 40,000 views, which for a very old video, uh, it's good. Of course, it took six, six, seven years to get these views. At first, it was getting like 2,000, 3,000 views, but for me, those were a lot of views at the time. So um, when I made this video, though, before I start destroying myself, one of the things I'd like to say is that please keep in mind that this video and the rest of the videos that I'm showing today. Uh, these were videos that I made when I had about 100 subscribers. So my channel at the time wasn't really a channel that had uh, any a real exposure. I didn't even know that I would have got to the point where um, I would have had an actual voice on YouTube. And it was mostly content that I was producing for my friends, uh, people that liked the medieval period, people that I played role playing games with. And, uh, and at the time also, I didn't have much time to do the research because I was a full time high school teacher. Uh, whereas now I have a lot more time to do uh, to do the research for my YouTube videos. And also, I feel the pressure of the responsibility of a channel with a reasonable amount of, of views and and subscribers, which means that I put a lot of time into double checking the things I say. But at the time I wasn't doing that. So uh, you'll have to excuse me for that. So let's begin watching. Let's see what I say on this Great Helm video. Hello YouTube. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the Great Helm. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to say is that of course the helmets that I was using were horrible horrible, like really cheap replicas and, and nothing whatsoever to do with the sort of uh, armor that I show now on my channel. Let me show you what I mean. So for example, even though this is not the same kind of helmet, um, you're all mostly acquainted with this. This was made by the Postelic brothers. It's made um, to my specifications. It's a I would say almost perfect replica and uh, it's exceptionally well made. The helmet that I'm using on the video here instead is a cheap Indian helmet and so it does not it does not really represent the sort of historical objects and therefore it can be misleading in a way. Uh, first of all the first problem there is the ocularia they are too large and generally speaking I mean it's a great helm it's flat top great helm so it's not too bad. There are other helmets that are a lot worse because they are more complex than later helmets usually but this is generally speaking being the sort of great helm that knights would use, I want to say mid 13th century, because again, it's a flat top and it's a smaller one, more close fitting. So the sort of helmet that you would put on a male coif, which I will do in another video that we're going to look at today, uh, but there will be another problem there. So stick because I'm going to speak about that as well. Uh, but generally speaking, okay, it's not too bad, but you can tell it's machine made. You can tell it's made without any idea of how the real historical object functions and therefore even though at the time that's what I could afford because it's also important to understand that I started my channel on a teacher's salary okay and therefore this helmet that you see here cost me about 450 euros whereas the helmet that I had in my in my hands there cost me 40 euros something like that so uh, you understand 10 times is it was this would have been prohibitive for me at the time so I, I used what I had uh, but still I think it's important for me to point out that the helmet it being a cheap Indian replica, it does not help us really study the real historical object. Let's continue. Let's begin with the actual name. Uh, this is a great helm. It can also be called a pot helm, a bucket helm or a barrel helm. 
The great helm is a helmet typical of the high Middle Ages. Okay, so this as well, I mean, the name is, is fine, the, the information, general information is okay, but uh, what I say now is that it's a helmet typical of the high Middle Ages. Now, I'd like to sort of expand on that a little bit because it's not inherently wrong as a statement, but it's important to, to, to also say that the great helm is not only a helmet of the high Middle Ages, it's typical of the high Middle Ages. So when we imagine a knight from 1250, for example, then sure, uh, that's that's the typical look although of course at the time nasal helms and less protective helms were still being used but uh, it's also a helmet that will continue to be used and it will sort of develop together with uh, other helmets such as the bassinet in conjunction with bassinets and then eventually the bassinets will be the better helm also because it provides uh, the the option of raising the visor whereas the great helmet by its default design if you want to breathe more if you want to see more you need to remove the entire helmet and that's why visored helmets will be the to-go technology they will be the, the technological development of the future if you will but um, this helmet will continue to be used evolve it won't completely stop being used in the high, after the high middle ages it will evolve uh, so towards the end of the 13th century it will become more of a sugar loaf helmet uh, it will start to be used not only on top of a male coif but on top of a uh, servilier or a secret helm so you've got like two helmets one inside the other it will start to become bigger and bigger until we get to the late 14th century version such as the pembridge helmet which is massive it will be used later on as well and remain in use until the 14th century it was used by knights and heavy infantry. Okay, so I did say that it will remain in use in the 14th century, but I think I should have specified in a different form, not the one I'm, have, I'm having uh, right now and, and I'm holding now, because that one is a typical mid-13th century kind of helmet, flat top, but the flat top will be abandoned because if someone hits you with a mace, but even with a, with a sword, I want to say, uh, on the top of the helmet, uh, then much of that force will be redirected onto your spine and you don't want that, so uh, that's why the sugar loaf helmet, and even this one, has a sugar loaf with a pronounced ridge that you can see here well this will help a lot to disperse that energy and encourage weapons to glance off whereas a flat top doesn't do that because a flat surface it's not as effective as defending at defending mm -hmm. as a globular surface which is why also breastplates and that sort of late 14th century early 15th century armor uh, will be more globular and more rounded now as far as the ventilation is concerned as you can see there are holes in the sides okay so the breaths again uh, they are not really you can tell that they are machine made and uh, they look a bit weird um, it, it, it's true that sometimes some helmets will have both sides with breaths so that's okay but generally speaking it would have been nice to point out they would have been more typical to have breaths only on one side namely the right side because uh, when you put that when you add holes in your helmet you are that side of the helmet will allow you to breathe better you have a better airflow and exchange of air uh, however that side will be more compromised if you will and that's why usually it's going to be the right side because the left side for a right-handed opponent is the part that is more likely to receive a, uh, a blow including a lance strike and if that happens you want it to be solid again that's not always the case but usually asymmetry in armor as Ian Lespina explains very well on his channel uh, has a reason, has a function. It's not just style. And in this case, I think I should have I should have said that. A little ventilation and could quickly overheat in hot. So here again, I'm making the same mistake. I am showing helmets that are cheap Indian replicas instead of showing actual museum pictures. And uh, and that's something that is not okay. And I don't think that I mean I don't do it anymore. But it's uh, it's something that I did and that I'm kind of a little bit of ashamed of. But uh, it's a mistake. You know, again, the channel was just beginning it was just starting and i it was just something that i wanted to show to my friends at the time so please excuse me from that please keep that in mind and let's move to the next video because i think i've spoken enough about this one okay so the next video is this one about the templars and again the general information the general historical information is okay um a little superficial perhaps but then again as i was saying it's one of my first videos my 33rd video to be specific and um, the problem again is the costume the problem is the stuff i'm wearing and also i'm being very serious on this one i'm very very dramatic am i not <laughs> with a very dark atmosphere i like the beard though I, I think i need to let my beard grow 
to about that level. I think it looks good. Okay, so I, I have to remove the, the audio because in, on this video I used a music that then it was later on claimed. So if I if I show the audio on this section at the beginning, then this video will also be demonetized. I'd rather not. And this video did get 70,000 views, which I mean, it's 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 pretty good. So finally, I am starting to use on my 33rd video, I understand, okay, I need to show actual iconography. And so that's when I'm starting to use iconography. And, and it's great because even the majority of medieval iconography is public domain. So you can use it. You might want to double check, but you, you can use it. So it's there is no reason why not to. And there are a couple of sites that, that, that are excellent for that. It's manuscripts and miniatures and brass effigies and brasses or brasses and effigies. These are two dot com, of course. And these are two sites that I strongly suggest for your own research and if you make content because the majority of the images as far as I understand the public domain you might want to check because it does say and so you can use them and um, it's great uh, I've been using it for a couple of years now and uh, so this is already starting to get better but the situation falls dramatically when I get to the section about the equipment all right so let's have a look at the actual equipment for a Templar as you can see here we have chain mail my gosh, I'm even using the word chain mail, I can't believe that. So of course it's mail or a mail shirt, chain mail is redundant. You're basically saying the same thing twice. It, it's more of a video game, role playing game. Again, not my first language, I'm not English. So I suppose um, it can be excused, but at the time I didn't know that I wasn't supposed. I actually learned that you're not really supposed to call you chain mail from Matt Easton, a scholar gladiatoria, and I still remember when I was making content on YouTube, and uh, and I remember when I had like 200 subscribers, and he subscribed to my channel, and at the time he had 35,000 subscribers, and I was like, whoa, a gigantic channel of 35,000 subscribers is subscribed to me, I can't believe it. Crazy, it's crazy that now I have like more than 10 times those subscribers, and, and it's still, it's still amazing. So, um, and that's an Indian butted, super cheap male shirt and it's horrible. And I'll say all the things that are wrong with it in a moment, but let's continue because everything else is wrong in this picture. The robe, although I have to say that this robe is not particularly historically accurate. Thank you. So it's not that I didn't know, That's because I did find a comment recently of a guy saying, ah, you do debunking videos, you should debunk yourself. And I thought to my, he was referring to this video specifically. And I have to say, I agree with him. Um, I, the reason why I made it, he didn't really inspire this series of me debunking myself, because I was already talking about this. I had the idea about three weeks ago, I was talking to my girlfriend and I said, you know what, I think I should debunk myself. It will be, it will be hilarious first and foremost, which is great. Um, uh, but also I think it would be good would be a good way to show that I don't just look at other people and be like, oh, I'm, I'm so I'm so righteous on top of my high horse. I also do the same to myself. And uh, but as you can see, in this case, it's not that I didn't know that that was wasn't historically correct. It's just that it was the only thing that I could afford. Uh, but I think I should have stressed that out a bit more. Um, but anyways, let's see what let's see what I say about it. And perhaps I might add a bit more on, on top of that. Accurate, because we have a big red cross in the middle, which this actually did not happen during the Crusades. Uh, what we know is that probably they had a small red cross towards here. On the okay, so it's right. It's true. So the, the cross is absolutely incorrect and uh, it would have been a small cross. That's what the period sources tell us. Uh, I believe it's a pope, actually. It's, it's probably a it's probably a papal bull or something like that. I don't remember right now specifically that, that describes the, the crusaders. And um, but I do mention that the small cross would have been here instead. I think it would have been on the, more on the left rather than over there. Uh, let's see what else I say here on the side. Um, this is probably a replica made from the um, 18th century, so it's something further on that... Uh... Yeah, uh, I wouldn't call it a replica to be honest, now I would just call it BS, but um, generally speaking, yeah, Victorian age idea. It's a Victorian age idea of, of that. Actually comes up with this idea of the cross in the middle, but anyways, this is still good for our ideas, so they have... Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> It's not still good for our ideas, whatever that meant. Uh, I don't think it's good to give us an example because everything is wrong with it. Okay, so yeah, it's true that they had a white mantle and the robe and everything, but it's not even even the stitching is incorrect. The the the, the brown rim is incorrect. Male completely wrong. Uh, the, 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 
fastening mechanism is incorrect. So this is this is good for a for a for a costume party. This is good for like I don't know Halloween costume, but in fact that's what they sell it for sometimes on these sites like Halloween medieval Roman Spartan Templar armor, and it's like wh whatever. So what's wrong with the mail? Well, the mail first of all it's zinc plated. You can tell that, and that makes it easier because it doesn't rust. But it, the color looks like a lamppost, which is not that. If you see that kind of hue, very very light grey, you can tell that it's not what mail would have looked like in the medieval period. Uh, so that's already the first problem. The second problem is that the mail is butted. Now, butted mail is not completely unhistorical. I'd like to underline. So a lot of people, I think, in the community of the sword, we have become fixated into. Uh, putting forward the idea of good riveted mail, an historical riveted mail, that we kind of went the other way around uh, and, and started saying that basically buttered mail is incorrect, but it's not incorrect. An early uh, Roman mail probably was, was butted, and then it became riveted around the time of the Republic. I will make a dedicated video to that. I'm working on it, the evolution of Roman armor. You have both buttered mail and riveted mail in Japan, for example. So um, it, it would be incorrect for this historical period. By now, absolutely, riveted mail, four in one, would be the most common. And uh, sometimes you would have like four solid rings with one riveted ring in the middle. Um, for the Romans, it would be half and half. So it kind of depends. You have a lot of variation, but def definitely a buttered mail for a Templar would be strange. Um, it would have been riveted in this case. Also, because riveted mail is said to be ten times stronger than buttered mail against penetration. For cutting, buttered mail is fine, but against penetration it is said to be 10 times stronger. I'd like to actually test that um, because we've been repeating this piece of information, but I think it's something that should be tested. Um, but anyways, it's definitely a lot stronger. That's what I'm going to say today. Also, the length of the of the mail is kind of strange because since I'm impersonating a 12, mid 13th century knight, uh, by that time the mail should cover all the arm and be tapering towards the wrist and possibly have also mitten male mitten. The male shirt like this, that length of male shirt, will come back in the 14th century, in the 15th century, when you've got plates that are actually taking care of the rest. But for, for a mid-13th century knight, I think that's kind of a strange configuration. Then you have a male coif. So, uh, same situation, the male coif is again cheap, too open, too large. If I wear that, and I can actually show you this, I, I will put it on. Okay, so you can see uh, the, the, sometimes they are worse, sometimes they are even open down here. So at least this one covers me here, but it's not fitted. It doesn't go all the way back following my throat, which is what would have happened if this was a real 13th century uh, male coif. The over, you can see that it's hanging and that's not okay. Um, it's not a good replica. And then I put the great elm on top of it. Now, for that part, you would have a knight that wore a servilier, so a secret helmet, underneath the male coif, and then they would put the great helm on top. This would have happened. But if I'm impersonating a, I don't know, 1250 sort of knight, then I think I would be okay even if I don't have a secret helm. That's my opinion. As we move forward in time, though, uh, it will be more common to see people wearing a secret helm either on top of the male coif or underneath the male coif, but generally speaking in conjunction with the great helm. My arms are horrible. That please... Oh my gosh. Oh, I can't believe it. Look at that. So let's see what else I've got. Let's go back and see what else I've got. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I'm using the, 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 the long sword from the Lord of the Rings. What was I thinking? My gosh, that is... And look the way it's, in, it's inside the belt. Oh my gosh, this is so bad. This is so bad. Oh my gosh. The helmet, the, not the helmet, the shield. The shield is horrible. Okay, that's a wall hanger. That's not a real shield. Uh, sh heater shields of the time would not have the rim, as I said many times in my videos. Uh, definitely not have a metal rim, rim, but in general no rim. And um, they wouldn't. This is just a piece of sheet metal, and and it. I, I'm even holding it through the chain. 
what was I thinking? It's like, let's laugh, let's just do something fun, let's go outside and let's film it. I mean, I, st I started making videos for fun with my friends when I was 13. So you have to imagine that, you know, it's something that I just did, was it, was I 13, maybe 15 or 16, something like that. So it was something that I did for fun and at the time it, those videos didn't do anything. So of course, I wasn't imagining this video to be watched by 70, oh my gosh, 70,022 people. Um, so yeah, for, for I apologize profusely to all of you, all 70,000 of you, uh, for, for having shown you this, and I will be, I will do better. I will do better. Okay, number one, so my camera battery died just right, just now, so you're not gonna see me, you're just gonna hear me. <laughs> I'm just gonna say thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this kind of weird video, but I think it was important for me to make a debunking video on myself, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something from it, and most importantly, I hope you, you had fun. And I will see you again for my next upload, which is going to be on Saturday, so make sure not to miss it, and if you like my content, please subscribe to my channel, become a noble one for more content from the Metatron. And remember, the Metatron has pretty wings. <laughs> Bye.